Hi guys, no, we're at the anymore. Tate Museum. Just got off the phone with Daddy Cat Dog. He is awake. He's like, you guys can come back. I'm like, we're at the museum. Izzy is helping get brother's sockies on. And we are now off. Hold on. I got it. There we go. All right. And you guys will get this view point. Do you want to see the dinosaur or do you want to go inside first? Okay, let's go inside. So this is the Tate Earth Science Center and Mineral Mineralology uh, Museum. Let's see what you guys can see. All right, so you guys can see. This is a gas gasternus is an extinct giant flightless bird that lived during the late Paleocene through early Eocene epochs. I'm not sure on pronunciation, guys. About 61 to 50 million years ago, their fossils are primarily found in Wyoming and Europe. The most complete skeletons are from the Bighorn Basin here in Wyoming, previously believed to be carnivorous based on its large beak. Recent studies suggest it is more likely a herbivore, like most modern large flightless birds uh, in North America was originally called diatrima, but they were found to be the same genus as their European relatives. Life-size bronze statue by Gary Staub, Purchased by the Casper College Foundation, August 2022. So Izzy, why don't you stand next to it so I can get a picture of you and it. I'm gonna back it up a little bit for better perspective. I like that I can take pictures while recording. All right. So what else do you wanna go see? A bird that can't fly? Yes, much like an ostrich. We have geobling gemstones. Charlie, what are you doing, buddy? So we'll keep these. We'll chuck them. Charlie, that's the battery. They need that. Can you move your hand, please? Oh, look, you can, um, okay, Charlie. This is not for you to be playing with. I don't want to have to carry the battery pack around with me. All right, I guess I will. You want to take a picture in there? <laughs> Hold on, Izzy. I'm trying to zoom in. There we go. All right, do you want to do that one too? Here we 
we go. Well, that's what they decided to name it. Pancake? Mm-hmm. Oh, but you have heard this look like a pancake. Oh, that's why. Because the shell looks like a pancake. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys are charging now. Battery pack is good. I'll fully extend you guys. Okay, well, battery pack was good. I see. Oh, why don't you go in there? Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? This is really cool. Well, we're not going to buy anything in here, Izzy. We're here to explore. Tools of the trade. So you think you want to dig up a dinosaur, eh? Digging up dinosaurs does sound like a fun job, but paleontology that studies dinosaurs is hard work. It takes patience, time, and many different tools to do it right. Paleontologists use a variety of tools to excavate or dig up dinosaurs. Overall, they use the same basic 
field tools, whether they are excavating a snail or a T-Rex. Basically, however, does not mean primitive. While both past and present scientists use pick shovels, wheelbarrows, and then it's all covered up with this stuff. So you can only read like part of it. Izzy, don't touch stuff. And the evolution of a person we just saw says there is an entire family tree with well over 300 branches of horses ranging from the earliest ancestor up to the modern horse. This display houses only a few examples. There are numerous other branches of the horse family tree not represented here. So this is cool because as she's exploring and trying to do her scavenger hunt. I can take you guys out and show you really quick because I am not taking this whole thing apart. It's very cool. Oh wow, over there. Look at that. And this is all supported by a community college, which is just phenomenal, honestly. I don't know what that is up there. Whatever it is, it is gigantic. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Charlie. You're the ride for the phone, so you're not getting very much attention. I know, buddy. What is this? This is like the great great grandfather of a rhino. And we have great swimming lizard king up there. Check him out. And that's what he would have looked like. And then we have this guy, which is the great grandfather of a rhino. See, he looks like a rhino. And this is a rhino limbo. Did you figure it out? Well, what does it say? You should try to do it. Okay, so the first one is. So this is the, okay, we're going to do it. Tate Geological Museum at Casper College, scavenger hunt. Which animal in the museum had the largest eyes? So we need to look around. And then what do the blue stickers on Big Ben's turtle show? What minerals glow, what mineral glows bright green under UV light? Why is the Edmontosaurus called Dead Sheep 148? And which Pedatorosaurus at the Tate Geo Geological Museum has the most teeth? And which animal has the nickname of Twinkle Toes?
So we're going to show them the back. No, but she is super old and she's made it this far. So we don't mess with things that are old. We take care of them. So, so you guys can see it. This ball that's back here, which I can't like make the phone. Yes. Hold on. The, is that her brain? That is not her brain, but that is a, that is the ball portion of the socket that her brain, so from you guys' perspective, oh, right there, that ball. No, so her brain would have been elsewhere, but that was a socket. So like, imagine this is the ball that you're seeing. There's another part where it would rotate like that. But it broke off? No, it's still there. It's the most intact one. And, th and that's why it's important 
because that's a huge scientific discovery of having one in that ship or that is still there. And then we have Stan the Tyrannos Tyrannosaurus Rex in 1987. Stan. Stan like Poppy. Yes. Stan Sarakison, an amateur paleontologist, spotted a large pelvis, pelvis weathering out of a sandy cliff near Buffalo, South Dakota. Excavation began in the spring of 1992. It was a major undertaking for the Black Hills Institute of Geological or Geologic Re Research. Peter Larson Wright is mapping the bones near the heavily weathered and broken right side of the pelvis. The anterior dorsal vertebrae of sand can be seen exposed in the foreground. Each area of the dig was carefully mapped and documented before the fossils were removed so that they would be, there would be thorough records of the excavation. These records can provide information about the environment or how the animal died. So this is, oh, you guys can't even see it. Oh, you're too zoomed in. This is a T-Rex skull. Like a real one. This is the okay, hold on. I'm going to take a picture of you. Stan the Tri Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is its way. It's so tiny compared to the body. Well, it's not a real brain, but yes. Because a real brain would just... I would have already... Now, these uh, things are on the platform the in front of his chin. These are all casts, so feel free to pick those up if you oh, want a closer look at them. Okay, it. so you yeah. can pick these up. So that's an endocast. That's a mold of the inside of the Tyrannosaurus Rex brain base. Oh. So T-Rex's brain would have been the right size and shape to fit in that endocast. And interestingly, a third of that brain volume seems to be devoted to the sense of smell. So he did have a really good sense of smell. On the human brain, the olfactory bulbs are only as big as Q-tips. We humans have one of the worst senses of smell in the animal kingdom. But we've got those nice big cerebral hemispheres. Oh, yeah, yes. What's that? Yeah, human. It's true. And my sense of smell is not as good as a dog or a wolf or a tyrannosaurus. True. Yeah. You can pick it up. Yeah. That's the claw that goes on the tyrannosaurus's hind foot. Oh. Or like a tyrannosaurus toe claw. No, no, no. no, no, no. It's, a, it's a toe. It's like this. It's like this. And you have fancy feet. He had fancy toenails. Yes, you had fancy feet. Thank you for that information. My pleasure. Yep, that's called the brain stem. So that's the part that comes out of the skull and connects to the uh, uh, spinal, uh, spinal cord. Now on this endocast, you can see a large peg at the back. That is probably the brain stem. So that would have come out of the back of the T-Rex's skull and attached to his spinal cord. And if you want to see where it came out, just look at the back of the skull right there. That is where it came out. That big hole is called the foramen magnum, which means big hole. So in July, there would have been that brain stem sticking out of it. Underneath it is something that looks like a doorknob. That's called the occipital condyle. His first neck bone was shaped like a cup, and that fit over this condyle to make a ball and suck it. Oh, like over here. Right. Yeah. Now, if you I didn't even bolts, see it because we hadn't been to the back of that one. It's perfectly spherical. Yeah. So she had a really mobile head. No matter what direction the T-Rex was attacking her from, she could make sure her horns were pointed at it and uh, stay safe that way. If you use your head as a weapon, that's a very good shape of occipital combat to have. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's uh, Triceratops neck bones, and here on that first one, you can see that cup joint, and that occipital condyle would have fit right into there. Then the uh, two vertebrae behind, shell? that's exactly what that is, very good. It's the shell of a soft shell pearl. They're still alive today in Louisiana and Florida and places like that. And if you look at the shell of a modern soft shell turtle, it looks exactly like that shell. And right in there. Mississippi. We're from oh, Mississippi. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we came from Maryland, but we're, I'm originally from Mississippi. So, yes, we do have soft shell turtles there and snapping turtles and all oh, of that. Oh, love snapping out, yeah. turtles. Those are cool. So, yeah, if you went back in time, say, 66 million years and walked around Wyoming, you can't go back in time. It's true, but it doesn't mean I can't dream about it. But, yeah, um, you would see a lot of things in Wyoming that you would read. recognize from Mississippi. Mm-hmm. I can so read. There were... Um, 
gars, uh, like the modern alligator gar living here in Wyoming at that time. There were uh, bowfins, just like the bowfins you find today in Mississippi. And a variety of different turtles. It's totally looking too. Yeah. It's like saying, oh, I remember those days. That's probably the girl right there next to the alligator. Well, that's a, a hard shell turtle. There's um, two major groups of freshwater turtles. Some of them have uh, multiple plates on their back like that. Like this. Um, yeah. But see, this soft shell turtle would have been covered with skin when he was alive. So you can see the plates when you're looking at the bony shell underneath the skin. But oh, when it was alive, it would look more like that. A continuous mm. smooth layer of skin covered that shell and obscured the junctures between those plates. Now at the end edges of the shell there and there, those are the ends of its ribs. So the bony shell only comes down to here, the ribs stick out from underneath it. When it's alive, the ends of the ribs are covered with skin and cartilage. So if you hold a soft shell turtle like that, the edges of the shell feel like rubber. And that's why it's called a soft shell turtle. By the way, if you ever do see one, don't pick it up like that. Uh, the neck is longer than you think it is, yeah. and they bite. I found this out the hard way in Oklahoma. Just like with the snapping turtles. Mm. Oh, yeah, except that with a snapping turtle, I would have been missing a finger yes. afterwards. I'm glad it was just a soft shell turtle, but it still hurt. How do you hold it? The only safe place to hold it is right there, by the very, very back of the shell. And it can't quite reach you. It's going to try, <laughs> but you won't quite be able to reach you. They're very bad-tempered turtles. They're not nice at all. There you go. Yep, so you've had good practice. You ever see one in the wild? Which you may. Yeah. You true. might end up seeing one on Poppy's land. There's a crane preserve, and so there's oh, lots nice. and lots of stuff right next to his his property. Where you do the tractors and stuff? Yeah. No, we do the tractors inside the middle. I know, but behind Poppy's land is a it's a what is it? It's a national forest oh. of Sand Hill crane things, which I thought you guys had like some signs along the way um, for some type of cranes. Yeah, we do have sand hill cranes here. Oh, you Just do? They through. are a sand. Yeah. Oh, okay. They come here during the uh, summer and then they go back down south. Oh, then they come back to us. <laughs> well, where I'm from. Who knows? We might have ever seen the same yes. exact sand hill cranes. Yes, they're beautiful. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. That. Um, has the second hardest to pronounce dinosaur name. It's called <gasps> Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis, which means the thick-headed reptile from Wyoming. That was also a nickname for Dick Cheney, by the way. But yeah, it had this dome <laughs> of bone on top of its head, and inside of it was a hollow space as, as big as a peanut, and that's where its brain went. So the brain was quite small, but it was very well protected. That bone dome was like a built-in crash helmet. So some people think that that means it could ram into things with its head uh, without damaging its little brain. And it also had a cluster of spikes over the parietal bone right there. So it was kind of an ugly looking dinosaur, but at least it had a well-protected brain. It was functional though. There you go. <laughs> uh, you don't have to carry this around for the rest of the day if you don't want to. There we go. I'll get Timothy back where he goes. <laughs> you say bye, Timothy. Bye, Timothy. Bye. Anything else you want to learn about Izzy? Yes. He has lots of knowledge. As long as we stick like to my topic. Yeah. <laughs> I like the ocean. The ocean? Yeah. Well, if you could uh, go back in time about 155 million years, uh, you'd be standing on the beach. Right here in oh, Wyoming, nice. this be beachfront property near the end of the Jurassic era. Isn't that weird? Now we're 1,500 meters above sea level, but yeah, back then, uh, this area would have been underwater. Now, 50 million years ago, there were enormous freshwater lakes in the southwestern part of Wyoming. And we find um, gars, once again, that's the scale of a gar, and uh, a fish very like a herring. <laughs> you did what your brother did the other day. Glass was between there. <laughs> It was the other day. It was when we went to his doctor's appointment. He's trying to tell you stuff about the information that you're trying to whack your head on. <laughs>
And then uh, this would have looked a whole lot like a modern day bluegill uh, when he was alive. That's Priscacara. But now something you don't have in Wyoming or in Mississippi these days, freshwater stingrays. Oh. You find their fossils down in the Green River formations. So that's fascinating. All together, that's uh, what a typical Green River aquatic community would have looked like. Yes, Shane, can I help when you? When you get a ch uh, chance, can I see the quartz pillar we're going to use in the... Oh, yeah. In fact, let me, uh, let me go ahead and get that for you right now. Give you guys a little Thank break. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you like his discussions? Yes. He has lots of information. We love information. More than I like your information. That's not nice. It's not nice to say stuff that's not nice. It hurts people's feelings. That's not funny. I'm not going to have you learn that type of humor. Thank you for apologizing. Sometimes people use humor that makes fun of other people. No. And, uh, no. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything to benefit the other people. It ends up making them feel worse about themselves. That's why I pick on you whenever you do it. Because I want you to be positive in people's lives, not negative. I know. And how old are you? Ten. Ten. So you have to learn lessons. That's not nice either. So as you learn lessons, you'll get better and better at knowing these things. Yeah, of course now it is. You could pick this up too. I'm gonna wait, smile. Okay, good job. You can show it to your brother. But, I mean, you can take it to him so he can try to see it too. I, no, he's trying to eat it. Of course he wants to eat it. He's a baby hawk. He's like, I will put my toes with it. So what is it supposed to be? Oh, it's a skull. No, it's a bottom. No, no, the bottom is writing that is no longer legible. But the top of it is a skull. It's a, well, it, to be more precise, it's a cast of a skull. Uh, sir, why are we dropping our toes? Or socks? Look, sir. Sir. You're like, I don't want to wear the socks. Because I'm in the stroller. I'm in the stroller. No, that is creepy. Look. Something is creepy. The inside of there or? No. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah, inside of there. A big mouth. And I am not sure how to say any of these things. Dinicist, dinicitus, a false cat. So there is a faker cat. Right. You have to move your headis. This one. That is a fake cat. That's what it says. And then we have stuff over here, and Charlie took his sock off again. I don't know. This is all they study. So I'm sure that they know way more about this than we do. Alright, and so this is Izzy. I'm going to tell you about this one. This is a Megalosaurus, the average size of a Taurosaurus was about 10 meters, 33 feet, from head to tail. This bipedal dinosaur was one of the largest carnivores of its time. It is thought that even though animals lived during the same time as dinosaurs, the two built different ecological niches based on locations that were not by humans, and so the scientists believe that the dinosaurs may have preferred to hunt in the forest and thick underbrush in rivers and streams as a Open landscape where the allosaurus. That's cool. You're not even paying attention. You're already playing with something else. 
shark's tooth. It's a shark tooth from the tertiary period. So here's the tertiary period. Here are the rocks that are laid down during the tertiary period. So that shark's tooth is going to go somewhere in this layer of rock. Can you find it? Ding, ding, ding. Perfect. And that is going to be That's the one that we got. I didn't leave you, buddy. Sissy has a game to play. Sissy, smile. Can you look at me and smile? No, can you stay and look at me and smile? Thank you. Ooh, we have skulls over here. Can't get Baby Hope too close. So this one is a chimpanzee. Sexual dimorphism in hominids. Black-faced hominids. Lucy, Mrs. Plus, Tom Child, that makes me sad, The Black Skull, First Father, Candyman, Rude Boy, Tinge the Nutcracker Man, Twiggy, Buddy. Robust Australian <laughs> blue collar or rudder man. Hobbit. Rhodesian man. Pekin man. Cave man. Pro Magnod man. Modern man. What in the world? Gigantopithecus? German paleontologist Ralph von Cohenswald was the first to discover a molar of the gigantopithecus in the 1930s. The jawbone was, jaw was then found in 1956 by a farmer residing in China. Due to the size and structure, it is hypothesized the gigantopithecus was a creature that used his fist to walk. Wow. That's a little unnerving. Very unnerving. Look, Mommy, I did it. The skulls on those shelves are all cast, so if you want a closer look at the teeth or something, you can pick those up. Oh, okay. This is just kind of... Yeah, one of the most mysterious creatures in all of paleontology. All that's been found of it so far are uh, teeth and jaw fragments, and then this one mandible that was found in China back in the 1950s. And it's a lot like a orangutan mandible, but it's bigger than even the biggest gorilla mandible, so they think Gigantopithecus may have been the biggest ape that ever lived. Probably. Probably, yeah. Dr. Grover Kranz made a model of an ape cranium, the right size and shape to fit the mandible, so maybe that's what the head looked like. And he also estimated that it could rear up to a height of about 230 centimeters, but we won't know any of this for sure until people actually find the rest of it. And I'm hoping that happens within my lifetime, because I'm very curious about this thing. Also, this part looks a whole lot like that. Right, right. But there are two completely different organs. That is actually the Brachiosaurus' nose. The Brachiosaurus' nose was on top of its head for some reason. Nobody knows before. Yeah, so it's got a snout down here, but the bony nostrils are actually above and in between its eyes. Nobody knows why. Now, meanwhile, this guy has what's called a sagittal crest, and when it was alive, there were muscles running from the coronoid process on the mandible up to the top of his head, attaching right up there. So this guy had enormous biting and chewing muscles. 
and that's probably because he was feeding on something fairly tough. Look at the teeth there. The wear and pitting on those teeth is almost identical to the wear and pitting that you find on the teeth of a panda bear. So what do you think Gigantopithecus ate? A panda bear. I get that answer more frequently. Oh, that's really cute though. Do you know what a panda bear eats? They eat almost entirely bamboo. And bamboo is very tough, so it puts a lot of wear on your teeth. So yeah, this guy may have been a bamboo muncher, and that explains why uh, those jaw muscles have been so huge. Right now, eat because what? you won't tear this place apart. I, I thought pandas eat, um, eat the long stringy things that you were talking about. Eat bamboo? I think you're right. Yep, pandas do eat bamboo. And so that's definitely not a panda. <laughs> no, no, definitely not a panda. Why is there a humor of that? Why what? Uh, why is there a humor? Well, sometimes when I'm talking about these uh, hominids, people have questions about the postcranial skeleton. Now, I don't have the budget or the room for a whole full-sized human skeleton up here, but I do have this one-third scale human skeleton that I can pull down and discuss uh, specific issues, although it looks like somebody pulled its arm off. Okay. Here, Charlie. I'm going to screw around here. So, well, I know what I'm going to do after this. Oh, there's the screw. Okay, I'll screw your arm on this afternoon. Don't you Does it have a brain in there? No, it's uh, got no brain at all in there. Like my brother. <laughs> no, just joking. Just joking. He's all right. Why, why did you make that joke then? Because it was funny. Yeah, this little sibling rivalry that I know. And that's because it is a human. Your own skull looks just about exactly like this. Yours is a bit smaller, and you don't have these teeth just yet. In the very, very back of those guys, we'll get those when you're older, and presumably wiser. But yeah, other than that, uh, your skull looks like a scaled down version of that skull right there. Wait, so why would I... Why whenever I feel at the back of my, um, my gums, I don't, I don't feel any, like, well, because right now they're still deep in the jaw, still developing, but they'll come in later on, almost undoubtedly. Some people don't ever get their wisdom teeth, but most people do. I can feel like my stuff right now. Yeah, well, that might be the developing too. And so what's your name? Oh, my name's Russell. Russell? Mm-hmm. Well, you are awesome with this. Oh, you have lots of information. We enjoy it. All right. Glad I could help. Oh, absolutely. We love the we love the the extra information oh. and stuff. Yeah, this is a mandible. This is a mandible. Well, if you Maybe ladies end up with any other questions, don't it? hesitate to track me down. I'll be wandering around here all day. What's the question? It, it's, is it, it's two separate things. This is the uh, skull. This is the mandible. I think she thinks but, I broke it. Oh no. No, no. I'm thinking. I'm thinking like is that from a real like human? No, it's a cast, but it was made from a mold of the skull of a real live human. So it's the exact same size and shape and texture, and it looks exactly the same. But it's not as delicate, which is why I let people handle it. There you go. See, as advertised.
<clears throat> I'm trying to get you guys to see. And this is Jimbo. Wyoming J. I had to take you guys up so you can see the rest of the cool stuff. Whoop. I'm trying to wheel him around at the same time. But this is cool. And this one is Big Ben's Turtle. Buddy, are you just gonna tear everything apart? I assume that grunting is a yes. White River reptiles. Buddy. Okay, all right. You're you're not making anyone happy in here with making all that grumpy stuff. Do you do you really feel it? Like, what'd you do? Did you take the selfie stick? What did you do with the selfie stick? Oh, there it is. Hold on. I know you think you made dinosaur friends, but you're tearing everything apart, buddy. Trying to keep this guy charging. Can you move 
really grumpy if we can't find our way back to the hotel. Oh, you found something cool? We got some pictures, Izzy. Are you enjoying yourself? so I can see. And what are these? I don't know. Oh, these are little woolly mammoths. And they're like squishy. So you can move them around. What are you supposed to do with them? Oh, you're supposed to have them like You can stage them and I'll get a picture of you playing with them. Maybe a video. Maybe take a picture of this whole map once I get down with that. I'm getting pictures of you, baby. No, I'm like at the back. And there's other ones that you can open too. Macedon tooth crown. Charlie's having fun. A uh, woolly mammoth tooth. Colombian mammoth tooth. A mammoth only had four molar teeth, but each one was as big as your brother's head. Uh, Maybe even bigger. They say they are teeth. It says they're not tooth. They do not look She's like, like they're not tooth. They're not tooth. They don't look like human teeth, that's for sure. They are very, very different. And that's because mammoths uh, were almost entirely eating grass. Now, human teeth are not good for eating grass. If you tried to eat nothing but grass, you'd wear your teeth down to stumps within a couple of years, and then you'd starve. So, uh, yeah, best to stick to our human diet. But the mammoth tooth, first of all, it's huge. And second of all, it's got ridges of enamel running across it. And so when those two teeth grind against nope. each other, the upper tooth against the lower tooth. Don't eat the woolly mammoth. No. Whew, good. Say, no, no, stop that. Ah! <laughs> no, I thought I grabbed all of them. you just got an all. appetite for mammoth there, don't you? Jeez. You're like a Neanderthal. <laughs> Buddy, if you only knew how many people touch these things, you cannot put everything in your mouth. It's yucky. Yeah. And it's not good for them. 
So yeah, they look weird, but if you're a grass eater, that is just the perfect shape of tooth to have. No, 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 those are not. <clears throat> it's fun having an 18 month old. Good thing you got that seat there. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm gonna try to back up and get a picture. Hold on. What are you looking at over here, Izzy? Nothing. It's just to support the pages on the other side. Charlie's found something to entertain himself. It says, you guys can have the dinosaurs. I'm going to worry about trying to open these things up. Let's make it music. Charlie! Charlie! What are you doing, buddy? Are you being a crazy cat? You're doing crazy cat stuff? You're like, all these people I want to make friends with. Do you see people? This looks like something from Ninja Turtles.
Did he end up with another? No, oh. I'm wondering if this is part of that stroller. That might oh, have nope, it's part of this thing. But thank you. Oh, okay. Yep, it's welcome. definitely important. <laughs> Ice Age Survivors. Oh, it's all like rodents and wolves and modern humans. Nerd Gas Company LLC, that's great. Taking lots of pictures. This will probably end up like his Instagram stuff. I don't know. <laughs> That's cute. They've done a really good job here. Two turtles. I wonder if they were friends. Oh, that's cute. I was told there would be dinosaurs. These dinosaurs don't do anything. I'm bored with them. Trying to get you guys back in here. 
Sir, sir, there's something that you can play with right here. Look, yeah. sir. Look, sir. Oh, but it doesn't open. Nope. Apologies, sir. I did not mean to get your hopes up. I know, Mama. Mama, you got my hopes up. I thought I was going to be able to like mess with stuff. Well, I mean, I'm trying to see what's on here, buddy. It's a map. Oh, it's a map of the college. Mm-hmm. This is a rather large community college. Da. 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 Lots and lots of them. <laughs> oh yes, he's very energetic too. Oh boy, yeah. How long have you worked here? About 22 years. Oh wow, yeah. it shows, you know all the stuff. This is fantastic though. My best. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still a little shaky on mineralogy. I think I got most of the fossil stuff down pat. <laughs> and if I end up with uh, running into a dinosaur question I can't answer, then I've got that guy right there. Ah, so he he's good with dinosaurs. About dinosaurs. That's fantastic, though. Charlie, Charlie, what are you doing, buddy? Okay, what, what did you do? Did you try to get out and then you got yourself like in a weird position? <laughs> Buddy. Buddy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. He was out. He's like, I want to tear everything apart. You have the hiccups too? Do you want out? You say out? Out? Do you want out? High five? High five? Okay. Well, we can high five ourselves. Oh, look, you can play chess with them. That's cool. Buddy, there are way too many things for you to mess up in here. You just want to get into everything, though. Resource of oil and gas. Why are oil and gas important? They are vital in the development and production of much of our technology, both past and present. You can find oil as cars, planes, not just as mules, as medicines. You're not going to. You're going to go everywhere. 
Silicates. This one says resource. By the way, if you'll free travel nice. house if you want to play the fossil update. What a boy of these natural resources is known as the play of a thousand uses. It is highly absorbent and primarily used in kitty litter on on drilling rigs. Still steel mills and has a sealant on the angels. During the Cretaceous, volcanoes in the western United States erupted and sent volcanic ash eastward for thousands of miles. And what would one day be Wyoming's ash reactor so far in the western interior sea and eventually eventually formed a sodium. I can't read it because my fence There are different grades for tonight. Uh, but Wyoming's best grade can absorb and hold up to ten times their own weight in water. This is due to the sodium as opposed to calcium, which is found in other benzoic deposits. Mining, the first place benzoic mining venture in Wyoming occurred in 1888 at Rock Creek. Wyoming now leads the nation in bentonite production, accounting for 95% of U.S. products. It is recovered through open pit mining, which allows company to, companies to mine products that are buried up to 50 feet below the surface. To get the bentonite to the bentonite layer, all that was not nice. Uh, it was super duper not nice. Oh. Okay, you try and take it yourself down without having to help. That's what I'm going to do you a favor. It's an Ollie. What? It's an Ollie. An Oreo. Yes, so this is, ben this is on bentonite. And so bentonite is in kitty litter and all the other stuff. Uh, kitty litter, pharmaceutical, cosmetics, paints, crayons, papers, batteries, shoe polish, detergent, and as a binder in animal sheet products and fertilizers. So super easy to be important. And your brother is super easy to do lots of good things. So is an oleo important? Let me Uh, it is. Okay. All right, so the two exceptions, they're arranged in the Oh, Mommy? Can we go check out some of the other stuff outside of here? Two Don't let him touch that. All right, let's find the potty and then we'll keep exploring. All right, go ahead and keep. Well, you guys aren't getting anything in here. Come on. So there's more stuff out here. Lots and lots of stuff. Probably a 
bathroom back here. I think I hear water. Don't touch your ash. Um, well, why don't you ask the, let's ask him. What else do you want to explore, a cat? But don't we have to train for Buddha? Uh, no, not right now. Oh, you want, you're not done in there? You want to go back? That one, that one's not open. Are you going to show them how it works? Yeah. You're doing a great job, Izzy. Okay, well don't don't do stuff that's going to make you feel like you're going to fall. Okay, this needs a password. You can read to him. Be careful with him. Oh, 
All right, Izzy, are you ready to go? No. All the money on the gift card? No, because I don't know how much money is left on the gift card. Uh, you need to get these toys for your brother, though, because he's trying to put all the either on the floor or in the top. Charlie, quick. 
everything apart like a crazy dinosaur. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Stop. You cannot play. Oh, you want to do it? You want to push? You want to push? Push. You want to push? What are these? Those are soap. Oh. There we go. Sometimes it has you signed, and sometimes it doesn't have you signed. This one, it doesn't have you signed. And you say, have a great day. You guys are doing great. Thank you. If you enjoyed the museum, right there next to you, there is a QR code. I just took a picture of it, too. Excellent. Yep. What was your name? My name is Shaden. Shaden? Yes. He's, he's Russell, so I got him too. I think he's Russell, right? Yep. All right, have a great day. All right, um, so we go this way. So it's Shaden and Russell, and they were both awesome. We have more dinosaurs over right here. They're everywhere. Dinosaurs everywhere. Can we spend? Uh, I have to see what time it is. I can open it. Creator and host of Dirty Jobs. Me, my bro, I'm so much money on this one that I think it's available. Oh, that's fascinating. I would do a Dirty Jobs thing. Or, I would do, like, all the jobs. I like jobs. I like Dirty Jobs. You like what? Bless you. There was a show that was called Dirty Jobs. It was when a guy went and learned how to do all the dirty jobs, and then they just like recorded it. Um, watch out! I'm going this way because I don't want to go on the other side. Good job! Good job! Oh, did you guys? You did. Okay. Hopefully, you didn't get any personal identifying information. But look, there's another trailblazer. And since it's not mine, I can showcase it. Is another trailblazer. Yes. If it wasn't yours, then you would what? If it wasn't mine, I wouldn't show the, the tag. But I'm proud of that trailblazer for being out here and doing all the trailblazer stuff. Mommy, it's Purple Cowboy Town. Yeah, I know. So, Cowboy Towns have trailblazers in them? Everywhere has trailblazers. People like them because they are good trucks. Well, I 
Trailblazer is a good truck. Our Trailblazer is a big version of the Trailblazer. So this Trailblazer is shorter. So do you see how this Trailblazer door has like a divot right here? So if you look over here, our Trailblazer does not have that divot. So this Trailblazer is smaller than our Trailblazer. This Trailblazer only has two rows of seats. Uno, dos. We have uno, dos, tres. Uno, dos, tres. Tres. And we have a baby hawk and a fiery sense. unicorn. That, that Trailblazer does not have a baby hawk or a fiery unicorn, to my knowledge, which is limited because I don't know much about that Trailblazer. Except that it's a trailblazer. Except that it's a trailblazer and it's the right color. Alright, I have to totally unwrap you guys. So you guys are all like <laughs> super wrapped up because Charlie is getting into the battery as Charlie does. You know what? I gotta put you. No, uh, no, because this sounds about you guys on charge, anyways. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like home movies with Michelle Fix it. And if you guys don't like it, you don't like it. That's up to you. So, sit there for a minute. And I have to get another ah! phone case because you guys are going to topple over at some point. You're going to break my phone. And my other phone, they're kind of grumpy because they're like, oh yeah, 259 or whatever. And then uh, I go in there and they're like, oh no, it's like three. 79 or whatever and now it looks like I need to learn how to fix phones because I am not paying that much money to get phones fixed because phones for that I don't know I don't know how much that phone still costs but that amount of money to do it is ridiculous and I'm glad I didn't do that the mobile thing he was talking about even though they discounted he was trying to convince me that they were everywhere Plus, this one to the Beamer or the Nova or the SIP is in Georgia no wonder I've never heard of it. I go all over the place. Just saying. Thank you, Azim. Yeah, when it doesn't have any money on it, you can have it back. All right, that needs to go over there. Uh, hold on, Azim. Why do you need a pin? Why my name on this? Oh, on your receipt? Oh, 